dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable day. Look, I'm not going to be long. The one thing about these little truck conversations um, that I do, I get teased about them and everything like that. But what happens is I'm literally so busy during the day and uh, I can get in the truck and I'm oftentimes in my vehicle, I'm not listening to the radio, to music at all. It's quiet time, it's uh, thought processing time, it's time to myself, one of the few places I can get and not really be bothered. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like, hey, this is a good time to do a video. Plus, the, the travel time is normally not that long. So it puts me in a place where I need to do what I need to do, get it out and move on. Uh, and so it's become, you know, a place where when I'm on the way somewhere, especially like after I leave the office, headed to the gym, headed to the cigar shop, real quick, drop in, share something, get on off and keep moving. Um, but yeah. Whatever is going on right now, if you believe in what we're doing, and you've heard this and you'll continue to hear it, if you believe in what we're doing, click the like button, click the share button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. But also, you know what we do isn't free. Uh, we have been doing what we've been doing for nearly three decades. Uh, I've compiled tens of thousands of hours of scientific research. Uh, I have created programs. I have implemented programs. I have uh, written volumes of books, articles, and, and, and uh, commentary position papers and everything I can in defense of our children. Um, so if you believe in what I do, show some love look inside the description box at the top of the description box to come uh the post box wherever you're going to see this um you can click the link and give or you can give through the organization's cash app account that information is in there as well okay um one well i ain't gonna say final because there's still a lot of things coming out about this and i, I really want to unpack it but uh sequela uh Robinson, uh, everybody's on the Justice for Quella movement. Um, everybody seems to be outraged. But are we asking the right questions? I know a lot of people are asking the questions from the perspective of if that was my child, if that was my sibling, if that was someone I cared about. And that question should be asked. We should want to know what really truly happened. We should also be aware of the fact that the type of rage that you see in that is more likely not something that transpired while on the trip. And from what I'm understanding, um, it wasn't long from the point of her arrival before this happened. So what this tells me is that was more than likely a conspiracy, uh, an understanding between more than one person that this was going to happen. Uh, something that I took away from it the few times I did watch it and I couldn't watch it. And I, I, the clip I watched was real short, probably less than 30 seconds. But in that 30 seconds, I found a lot. And, you know, with my background being in human behavior, uh, I observe everything and I analyze everything. What I gathered from it, first and foremost, was that nobody was surprised that it was happening. Nobody was going, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing it? Stop. Somebody stop this. None of those terms or phrases or behavior you hear. What you do hear is a male voice, which still makes me sick, says, Sequela, you got to fight back or fight back, girl, whatever. And being a male in there, you, you should be the reason it's not happening. We really need to get our men to a point of understanding the role of men in any culture, in any time, in history. There has to be a level of willingness to defend the women in your enclave, in your community, 
within your race, your group, at all costs. This isn't about whether they qualify for defense or being defended. This isn't about whether they are behaving the way you think they should behave. This isn't about whether they measure up to the standards that you think they should measure up to. That should be something inside of you as a black man that says a black woman is off limits, even to another black woman. A black, black child is off limits to anyone. And be willing to stand on that square and be unmovable. And yes, at times that type of stance can come with hostile uh, responses and reactions. Absolutely can. I know a couple of cases in which people went to the defense of a black woman and gave their life for it. You have to have something for which you're willing to die. The thing is, we'll die for stupid shit, but won't stand up for something that has honor attached to it. Something that, even though you're not hit, we'll attach honor to dying for our country, but we won't attach honor to dying for our women. And we'll die for our country from behind some stupid bullshit that we don't even believe in when we really truly question, question about the premises and principles under which uh, the stance we're taking and we're fighting for. We, we don't even agree with it, but it's considered an act of valor. It's considered honorable and it's given, it's given a state of honor to die for your country. I'm not saying you shouldn't die for your country. If it's your country, even if you don't agree with it, it's your country. Here's my thing though. I should have the same mindset as a black man because at the most primitive level, my responsibility is to protect the black woman. Not because she's behaving the way I want her to, but because it's my responsibility and I don't get to choose in what situations in, in situations. And no, I'm not talking off the top of my head and blowing smoke. If you ask Mary, and there have been times I've passed by and seen a black man and a black woman going at it. They weren't exchanging licks, but it didn't look good to me. I stopped and I went back and I made sure she was okay and he understood that I was there. And it could have easily escalated. And the last thing I would want to do is be in a situation where I could be taken from my family or I have to take the life of another black man. But I also understand as a black man, there are certain responsibilities I don't get to step from underneath. That's the first thing. That's just, that's not the whole thing. That's the first thing. Is how we so easily look at situations and don't see how they impact us on a greater level. We see the emotional impact of this but what we don't ask the questions we're not asking is how do we get to a point where that is even something that crosses the mind of people now what you have to understand is regardless to race your circle should be protected your sh your circle should be precious your, your circle has to be monitored and observed because when you allow the wrong person in your circle, you end up like Martin, like Malcolm. You end up like Fred Hampton. And I can go on and on. There are people who are in your, in your, very close to you that don't like you. Now we can get into the throes of why so many people don't like other black people. Now, that's a whole nother conversation, but it's a conversation that needs to be had. It's a conversation that j definitely should be provoked by what we're seeing happening in, in, in all these senses, senseless acts of violence by people who you would think have a relationship with one another. We need to ask why our black men are so implosive and destructive with themselves and their women. We should ask ourselves why so many young black boys are violent towards themselves and other black boys. We should be asking ourselves why there's such a level of cat fighting and infighting among black women who say they are standing strong with one another but consistently having odds and being at odds with one another. They are almost as lethal to one another as black men are to them. We don't want to talk about that. 
we want to talk about the points that are presented to us by the media, the, the things the media tell us we, tells us we should be upset about. And we don't realize that we're being manipulated and turned in on one another while simultaneously being gaslit, while simultaneously being manipulated, while simultaneously being socially constructed and guided and engineered into perpetual poverty, into self-hatred, into self-destruction. And we are constantly engaging the very elements and components that create it. We don't just go from being born to being the type of people who kill that girl. We don't just go from being born to being the type of uh, young young black male who kill those football players at the University of Virginia. We don't just show up one day and be that. We don't. We're not born that way. You got maybe one percent of the entire population on the planet born psychopaths. Everything else is a developmental process. You're becoming based off of what you're engaging, what you're consuming, what you're experiencing. Your norms and standards are being set by your life experiences early in life and the frequency of those experiences are set in the standard of how you live life and what you consider acceptable. Those norms and standards are what's going to create what we call your conscious. Not your conscious mind, but your conscious. That thing that triggers you when you know you're doing something you're not supposed to do. And you wonder why some people act like they don't have a conscious. They have one. But the norms and standards that set the baseline of their conscious is different than yours. They're on a different moral scale. They're on a different scale of violence. They're on a different scale of what friendship looks like. They're on a different scale of what they think respect is. And based off of that different scale, they have a paradigm that shapes the norms and standards and behaviors of how they respond to these very things. What you consider unacceptable, they consider necessary. And if we don't understand that this is being pushed and developed within our communities by way of media, we don't have a problem. If you don't understand that poverty isn't simply a reality, it's a constructing mechanism that changes and shapes thinking around lack, around trust, around uh, respect, around need, around desperation and devastation. And what you don't understand is poverty guarantees a heightened level of violence and an acceptance and tolerance of that violence as a means. And so if we don't understand that it's not just poverty when we keep biting the consumer bullet that they feed us, it's not just poverty we end up with. It's all of the consequences, ramifications, and repercussions that come with poverty. Increased incarceration, increased violence, increased criminality, diminished humanity. All of these things are a part of it. We look at it on the back end and we go, oh my God, what kind of person does that? I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. What kind of people? But what we're not looking at is what created it. We're looking at years and years of something developing and us not doing what we're supposed to do to change it. We're wondering why. If you don't effectively and intentionally socialize children, they will be socialized, but they will be socialized by the environment. They will be socialized by peers. They will be socialized by what they consume through their gates, their eyes and their ears, what they read, what they watch, what they hear, what they listen to, what they dance to, will have a, 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 a contribution into their socialization. And it will take it out of the hands of where it should rest, in the hands of the parents, in the hands of the elders, in the hands of the community. And we are doing that. We are not owning that on any level. And we're wondering why we're getting the end result. You can't fight the symptom without understanding the cause. So I am challenging anyone who watches this video to really seriously sit down and consider how you plan to contribute to a shift in the developmental processes of our youth that will ultimately end up being our chance of liberation and power. We talk about the youth. I've heard so many times that the children are the future, but there's no specific universal plan of 
empowering and protecting and isolating and insulating our future, the children. They're out there exposed to everything. They're not being guarded. They're not being protected. They're not being prepared. You have seen me uh, speak. You have read in my books. You have read in my articles. In my, seen in my videos. Me say that true holistic education of black youth isn't simply the acquisition of academic skills or the de development of ac academic skills. It's far more than that. It is the full and holistic pre preparation and empowerment of black youth to grow up and go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete, but win. And in order to build that generation that's prepared to go out there and compete on a grand scale and win, then you have to also understand that this is a long-term endeavor. This isn't an overnight project. And what that's going to call for is something else you've heard me say time and time again. And that is that in order for us to achieve full liberation and empowerment as a people, we're going to need men who are willing to plant seeds. They may not live long enough to see come to fruition. Everything isn't about the band-aid. Everything isn't about the microwave. Everything isn't about the quick fix. Some things are going to take some seeds planted. Seeds that have long germination and gestation periods that won't just bear fruit overnight. That It's going to take time. You're going to have to have a generation that you literally feel with the power of freedom, of self-awareness, and then protect it, defend it against what's going to come at it as soon as it gets out into the world. It's going to be met with opposition of its own awareness. And you have to be there to defend it. You have to be there to protect it. You have to be there to reconstruct it when it gets damaged. And you have to be willing to understand that when this child finally grows up and becomes what I know they can become, I may not be here. My legacy will be in their victory. And if you don't have that mindset, you can't win here. Because we didn't get here overnight. And everybody's trying to get their name on something. Everybody wants to be recognized for something. Everybody's trying to be that dude. And what happens is you're more worried about being seen, heard, and getting yourself validated. That you're not looking at the long-term uh, validity of what you're doing. My legacy is going to be in the empowerment of the people whose lives I've touched. I won't get to see it in this form. But my consciousness will be aware of it. I understand that. I'm good with that. My great grandkids will get to know what I did. Get to see the fruit of my commitment to my people. That is how you have to approach this. My heart goes out to the family of this beautiful young woman. Um, I'm keeping them lifted. I'm still looking into what's going on. I'm still looking for a motive in the shooting uh, of those five people at the University of Virginia, three of which who died, three football players. Um, and what really was behind that, I haven't been able to get anything solid yet. Uh, I will say that there's a rumor floating around that the person who beat up and killed uh, Sequela Robinson is actually a dude. I can tell you that the photo that's being sent around has been photoshopped. I've had that checked. So everything that I've been able to check from close people to the whole thing said that was a female, wasn't a dude. Uh, so that I have checked. Uh, I still say it's something that, that's, that I'm missing in it. Uh, and that's what I thought when I heard that, I said, that's what it is. But then um, I for sure know that the, the, the photo that's being used has been photoshopped. Um, Really doesn't take a whole lot to check it, but I, I, I had it checked. It's definitely been photoshopped. But, uh, and then the people who are close to this that are commenting on it are saying that the, the chick that beat her up is a chick. Um, and the others that conspired against her were female. And, and the men who sit there were there and allowed it to happen were trash. That was, that's my designation. Uh, but I just wanted to put that in there. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. 
um, get in here and try to unwind for the day. Um, don't forget, show some love support. Donate. The link is in the description box. Uh, or you can donate through the organization's cash app account, which is also in the description box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. I'm out.